Hello and welcome to the Inquisitorial Archive. My name is Kevin O'Rourke and I'm going to be reviewing Black Crusade in this video. Black Crusade was perhaps a fancy flight games and it is the fourth Warhammer 40,000 RPG book. The, in Black Crusade it's a bit different to the previous games. You, instead of playing members of the Inquisition or rogue traders or members of the Debt Watch Mighty Space Marines, you play like you, you are playing as the servants of chaos, people who have fallen in league with the dark gods, the enemies of the Imperium. Uh, well, one of the many enemies of the Imperium, although a very powerful one. You're in league with demons and all sorts of vile supernatural forces. Instead of having ranks like in the previous games, they, they changed many of the mechanics in this. Instead of having ranks like in the previous games, you just start off with an archetype and different abilities are aligned with different gods or unaligned and as you get abilities that are more abilities that are aligned to a particular god you may gain the god's favour which will mean their god's abilities will become cheaper but certain other god's abilities will become more expensive and another god's will become less cheap. For example if you were to become aligned to corn, corn cornate abilities which are things like strength, parry I think Command and Intimidate, as well as a few others, are they these are aligned to corn, so other, these abilities would become cheaper. Um, your Nurgle ability, Nurgle aligned abilities such as Toughness would stay the same price. However, Slanish and Zinch abilities, which include Willpower and I believe Fellowship, and a few others in like Forbidden North things, will become more expensive. This is this works out, or you can stay online. You don't have to come online to a god. They have an entire mechanics uh, built around it. We'll get that later. You you don't have the so you check to see if you're aligned to a god for and there's different tables and they give you the XP cost. So if you really want to be really really good in close combat, you can just zip straight towards that. You can go like I want this ability. You don't have to wait for your rank to get it, or ask him, hey, can I have a little advance and it'll make you pay through the nose? You'll probably still be paying. For the abilities quite expensively if they're the good ones because they have the talents for example tier one two tier two and tier three and each of these have different labels on the table so stuff's always going to be pretty expensive what becoming aligned to god could be good for example if you're zinch aligned and you want to get fuse nodge that's 400 xp if this is a tier three talent i believe if you are unaligned i'll just get out the table this wouldn't be quite as cheap i think it's 750 i'll check it now to let you know, just to give you an example so you have an idea of it. Um, so, town table, allied, yeah, it'd be 750, I was right there. However, if you're corn aligned or Nurgle aligned, 1000 XP. There it makes up the difference. There's plenty of abilities like weapon skill and blessed skill and stuff which are unaligned. The alignments come into more play later on. You have eight archetypes. You have two, uh, two uh, races, each of them has four archetypes with it. You can choose to be a mortal. A human or referred to as heretics or you can play chaos space marine. Chaos space marines are a big thing in the background but you should not ignore the mortals anyone who's read or even has a basic knowledge of like Dan Abnett's novels with Gaunt's Ghost the Blood Pact or Scary without the chaos space marines. Um, you can be and you can be quite scary in this. The chaos space marines definitely have a leg up particularly initially and they still maintain a bit of a, a lead in some respects on the mortals but the mortals are no pushovers. Mortals, you've got the apostate for the mortals, who's your talky guy. He's quite good at I mean, doing his special ability. All the archetypes have a special ability. The special ability is he can make a charm test, I believe it is, and he can potentially get peer, which gives him bonuses to social attacks with a particularly social group for the rest of the session. So he can go, well, we're going in infiltrating the adept, uh, the we're going uh, uh, infiltrating the adeptus arbites. I'll try and get this bonus so I can pass some of those uh, deceive checks a bit easier and things, or even with other chaotic or xenos groups you can do this with. There's the Renegade, which is the most uh, combat of them and things. You start off with nice gear, the apostate who's the talking guy, he can have a power blade and things, which is like a power knife, it's pretty scary. The Renegade, he can start off with, if you wanted, a best quality chainsaw, a plasma gun and heavy guard price, which is quite similar to Stormtrooper guard price, which is quite reasonable protection you get you can you, their special ability is called a droid a droid means that you pick a stat in character creation 
And whenever you succeed at something that's based on that stat, you get an additional degree of success. So I think if you're actually clever with it, you can pick a renegade character who's got all these combat skills. You can spend some of your XP on getting social abilities. And if you picked fellowship, you get bonus degrees of success. You can actually make a great fellowship character with them. You can make a great social character with them, as well as being quite hard in combat. Then again, there's no reason you can't take the apostate and start picking up combat skills because you don't have ranks here. There's the heretic who is heretic, not heretic, the heretic who's like a renegade tech priest or someone who's delved too much into different knowledges. You can you can run fast and loose with the with this archetypes depending on your GM. The heretic, his special ability, he's got mechanics implants basically, which is a prerequisite for certain other abilities and certain implants and things. And he starts off with a bunch of abilities, which is pretty cool. Works out. The last of the mortals is the Psyker. Psykers have psychic abilities starting off. Their psychic abilities... They start off with a Sirene of Tree. So the most powerful psychic you can start off with. Um, the Age of the Gods, as well as Online, has its own psychic powers. As well as their exalted psychic powers. So if you stay unaligned, don't become aligned to a god, their psychic powers just for you once you reach a certain stage. Because, hey... You stayed on a light. Why should the guys aligned to gods just get their own spiff tables? There's a spiff table for being unlined and only being unlined. There's was well the generic unlined ones that everyone can get. There are four chaos basement archetypes. Chaos basement are like guys in debt watch, except for you're you're the bad guys. Um you have the champion who have only recently seen somebody somebody playing. The champion special ability doesn't make sense later on when I explain about corruption. The champion can spend um he doesn't actually spend anything. He starts with a power sword, which is one of the scary things. And all the chaos patients start off with power armor. When he's starting off with a power sword, um, that's that's one of the nice things about him. He's more of a, he's the most social of the chaos patients. Which is something like the Forsaken's pretty okay to too, but he's the most social. You, with him, his special ability allows you to choose his alignment and corruption point total for. Rerolls, which I'll get back to later. Or enough rerolls for how you spend your infamy points, which we'll get to later. Then you have the chosen. Chosen are your pure out and out combat guys. When you get a righteous fury, instead of actually getting extra damage in uh, Black Crusade, when you get a righteous fury, you roll a d5. And you don't get that anything to this like you would if you would gotten a proper criticals. You roll a d5 and you check up the critical table for the location you had the, the bad guy in. Which is pretty cool because you can stun them or you can get fatigue. Rather than just tearing through the bad guy's wounds very quickly, it means you can go for a bit longer. Works out. After this, we are looking at who? Let's see. Champion? Chosen? Ah, Forsaken. Forsaken are somewhat social characters. They're pretty... Um, they can gain commerce. They're special. They they start off with legion shotgun instead of like you know the chosen. He can he can take some extra bulk on or different bits of gear. It's pretty good. You have some generic gear and generic abilities uh, that all of the space chaos space and and immortal have all of these. Um, plus chaos space means only have five hundred XP to spend uh, at the default start rank, and mortals have a thousand. So they've got a bit more flexibility starting off. The Okay, the, the, the Forsaken special ability is when you're trying to use your infamy to get equipment and the equipment is only rare or lesser rarity, you get a plus 10 to get them, which works out. It's not great for trying to get the, the really difficult to get stuff, but if you're trying to get lots of quite nice things, little things, it's a great boon then. Fantastic for it. And lastly, you have the Sorcerer. The Sorcerer is a Psyker, He's a kid, but they didn't want to call him a Psyker because they want to distinguish between him and the mortal guy. He is probably was a librarian amongst the Space Marines. Not necessarily, you know, he may have made demonic pacts of various kinds to gain his arcane abilities. You start with a Psy rating of two. They also start with a Force Sword, which is a very scary weapon. You can channel your abilities through. You get bonus to damage and your penetration equal to your abilities. Plus, you can unleash the warp truth and cause devastating damage. But those are your archetypes. And from there, you can go wherever. Now, with the Sorcerer, you do the thing of if you come aligned to Korn, you can't use any of your psychic abilities. Or the Psyker, you can't use any of your psychic abilities because Korn doesn't like Psykers. He doesn't like trickery of that kind. But you can do it if you really want it. You just can't use any psychic powers. But hey, they give you the option. 
So you have the tans broken into tiers. There are some great ones. They've put in lots of ones there. Are, plus you can get a, a few more chaos ones. Like there's one called the Betrayer, where if you kill one of your minions, which you can expend XP to get minions and things, which I'll talk about in a minute. If you kill one of your minions or allies, such as another player, although you're not going to be stupid enough to get another player, you can do. You can do, but you you can get a bonus for next turn because, well, your character's a betrayer. They, you know, you're you're playing the bad guys. Although, as they point out, it's about perspective because the Imperium isn't exactly all roses. When you're looking. Or abilities. Another great one, if you want to play a guy who is one of the legionnaires, one of the original chaos base runes, world eaters, emperor's children, night lords, alpha legion, all of them, those guys. You want to play one of the original guys who fought on terror, or in the case Thousand Sons, sent a couple of guys to terror because the space was went off and destroyed their home world. You can take, or if you can take it as a mortal as well, there's no restrictions to take it as a mortal, you could actually be... You could play Immortals, this is 10,000 years, that's chaos, baby. You could be warp time dilation, various different things, or maybe the gods have granted you it extended lifespan. Why not? Go with it. If you come up with a cool back and one of my players before did this, they came up with a guy. Unfortunately, he we were starting off default starting level and he kind of He kind of he knew what his character wanted to be. And if he started the game much higher level with that character, he would have a great time. But his character was up here in his mind, his abilities were here, and he needed time to catch up between, and he, uh, he, he he bit the bullet, the character died, but he brought in a great new character, I'll tell you about in a future video, because he is worth telling about, this is a fantastic character, a very scary man called Nicholas Santos, who's based on Santa, and he's a Nurgleite, he's a scary, scary man. I would like to tell you about a few of the really cool characters, but we'll keep it to just the, um, the book here. But you can get this ability called Ancient Warrior. Basically, you are back around during the Horse Heresy. You are a Chaos Legionnaire who is there to time one of the guys who followed Horse or mortal who followed Horse. You get bonuses to dealing with other warriors who are from that time period and pieces of equipment that have the Legion name in it um, are cheaper for you. They're easier to get. They're one less rarity because you've got contacts and you've been around a while. In character creation, you get your gear depending on your class and things like that, but you also get a number of items equal to your infimals. You can get this for small stuff mostly. For the Chaos patients, you start with great gear, but all the Chaos stuff is starting to generate extreme rare and stuff. It's hard to get a lot of it. You don't get much of it. But for the mortals, hey, this is great. You've got like the modifiers down to like minus 10 or something. So you got a certain Chaos, uh, like character, you go, I'm playing an apostate. It go. I've got light power armor and I've got a power sword or a plasma pistol. You can do that. That that is crazy high power level. Let me tell you. Let me tell you like that's you're starting with some scary gear. You're not getting this in dark heresy. You get some of the stuff like that with Rogue Trader, but still you don't generally start with power armor. You can if you go to specific groups of guys. Um Well you can get we can Rogue Trader Rogue Trader you just made of money. But you have your abilities, it works out pretty well. The fun, uh, when you're making your character as well, another part I'll talk about is you pick a disgrace, um, a pride, and a motivation. These affect your stats and can affect your gear to a point with one or two of them. Um, and they're, they're, they're who your character are, they affect the stats. Just go with it and it works out. Instead of fate points, you have infamy points, um, which are equal to the infamy points, the tens of your infamy stat. You start off with 19 plus D5. It's rolled differently than the others. This is when you're setting normal. They give guidelines for if you're setting a much higher power level, like if a character dies or something, um, where you get additional infamy and corruption points. Corruption points are bad in the other games. They're good in this. In this one, you like the corruption points to a point. The game ends in three ways. Your character dies. They're dead. You've run out of infamy points to... They just miraculously survived dead you've become a demon prince which is quite hard to do they give different levels you need to get a certain amount of infamy and beat that infamy when you hit 100 crop uh, when you hit 100 corruption points i've always stuck with the max 100 two players in my games have become demon princes and because it was hard i think they they've really appreciated it and lastly you've reached 100 corruption points and you don't have 100 infamy or more you've just become gas spawn you've been mutated beyond control you're a mindless beast now but it's chaos, that's the way it's supposed to go. Why corruption points are good, well, the infamy, go direct to infamy points. 
You can spend them in a similar way to fate points in the previous games, except for your total corruption points affect what you can spend them on, as does your alignment. For example, Nargalites, I believe, can't reroll failed characteristic saves. That's what the champions are right. In a game, I had a Chaos Breaks Marine aligned to Nurgle, who failed a test and he looked over the champion, but the champion didn't like him. So the champion said, no, you were gloating earlier about how tough you were. I'm not going to use my ability, so you can use my Slanish alignment and corruption point total, so therefore you could have rerolled. There's a table on it, you've different effects, but the thing is, there's advantages being like that. Even though he couldn't do rerolls, when you're getting back wounds and you roll a random number, he automatically assumes to roll the maximum because he's a Nurglite. So you got that going for you. When you reach certain thresholds, which are different from mortals and chaos based, although I think the first is the same for them, when you reach 10 corruption points, which if you pick certain disgraces and motivations and stuff, you can start off with, you get a mutation. These mutations range from things like you become a goat person, like you've the head of a goat. Um, some of them end up with you have end up you, you, you become a pseudo demon, you've become part demon. And this has a particular benefits depending on what god you're aligned to or not aligned to. There's generally there's more benefits if you're aligned to God, but you don't have to. The advantage of not being aligned to God is you get to roll it's a D one hundred table. You get to roll twice if you're aligned. You only get to roll once if you're aligned. Not for bonus for them, wait for it. If you're aligned to them, you if you're aligned to a god, a lot of a lot of the abilities have additional bonuses if you're aligned to God, which is pretty cool. Um for example, if you have a slayer limb, one of your weapons has become melded to your arm. This you gotta accept mutations with, with Black Crusade. One of the mutations has become melded to your arm. It's pretty cool because if you're zinch aligned, it gives a warp arm quality, which means it ignores armor because it's full of arcane energy. Really scary. If you're aligned to a god, you when you're going to get a uh, mutation, a gift to god once you reach a certain point of track, you can roll. Try and get under your infamy. If you get under your infamy point total, you get to roll on your god's separate table where he has wonderful abilities. Like, for example, if you're zinch aligned, you could get Warp Smith, or you could get the Mark of God. If warp Smith gives you a Sire of 2, and if you're already a Bound Psyker, you become a Bound Psyker. It works out quite well. Zinch, if you're Zinch aligned and you're not a Psyker starting the game, you can become a Psyker. Not so with any, anyone of any other alignment. You get some great abilities. Now, if you, you corruption points, you get failure corruption points or success corruption points. Mostly, hopefully, you'll be getting success. If you get a failure corruption point, that's not necessarily a problem, unless that just pushed you over the threshold. If you do, Normally, when you're rolling gift readings, when you're rolling on the table for the gift, you can modify it up or down by an amount equal to your infamy bonus, which gives you a little leeway in what you want to get. Plus, in the Game of Master's Guide, they have a thing of burning infamy to push it even further on a one-for-one -one basis, which I think should be in the core book. And there's a couple other things in that which I will speak about should be in the core book, in my opinion. I think they should have them in there. And it would have greatly affected games if I had the book at the time. The... Next thing you get is, or well, if you, you can bring them up and down, but if you've got a failure thing, you, there's no chance of rolling your God's table. You don't get to roll twice because you're unlined. You roll, you don't get to modify it. You play as last. You could still get something really good. Or you could get something that your character hates. Once more, in Games Master Guide, they have the ability for you to be able to um, Per, and they mention it here, but they don't give them access. You can, at the GM's discretion, you can detail out how you do a ritual to appease the gods. You can permanently burn off five infamy, and you can get back your. Um, you can lose that gift. You don't get a gift in place. You just lost five infamy. But if you really hate something, it will destroy the character for you. A gift. I had a character who roll. I had a player who had a character who rolled up a thing which gave him lots of corruption points for every month. You had to make a test, you get faint assessed, especially with things dragged out. The character became a chaos spawn by the end of it, but he would have loved it. And plus, I think I think almost every gift he got was failure, failure ones, because of that, we're all started off with different things. The GM decides, it gives details on how you get additional corruption points success or infamy or corruption points failure, which can be affected by your god alignment. The setting for this is a screaming vortex. The screaming vortex is, they were on a match before, there was the Calixa sector in Dark Heresy and the setting for, well the default setting for um, Rogue Trader is in the Jericho Reach which is over here. There's warp storms in between, there's one little warp route connecting which is quite dangerous. In one of these warp storms is an area, it's like a mini eye of terror or maelstrom, it's a warp 
real space interface area. There's demon worlds here. There's all sorts of crazy, and the laws of physics don't really apply so much here. It's not known about it except for by a few members of the Inquisition, other people like that. Although they play fast and loose with that in different books. But it's pretty cool because you've got an area going there. Doesn't mean you can't go to other places. Now, my own personal recommendations. Although my first game I ran, we had Mortals and Chaos Space Marines. I originally said, hey, let's just play Mortals. But I guess really want to play a Chaos Space Marine. So I play a Chaos Space Marine. Um, I'm quite a firm believer now. I think it's just easier for the GM. Although it can be done, I think it's easier for the GM if you play, and it, it provides more options in different ways, if you have a, either an all mortal group as in non-space means, or all chaos space group. If you've an all mortal group, it's easier to sneak around in society. You can hide your mutations and things. You're not a giant super soldier in power armor. Um, you can hide out, you can do games like where you're, you could do games based in the Clixis sector, Colossus Bands, you could be a like, horribly corrupt rogue trader, or you could play, in games where you're into underhive or manipulating different things, or play a ca all chaos space marine game where you go around, you everyone's in, it, it's easier for, to balance combat and some options. Some of you go, yeah, we could do this, except for this character left do nothing, and nobody wants to like force one of the other players to sit there and do nothing. Like you're sitting in the van of your chaos space marine, going, oh, if only I could kill loads of people, but this is what we agreed to, and it makes sense. But if you're all playing chaos space, it's like, well, we'll never be able to pull that off because look at the size of us. It's my own personal preference. And I have run games that have worked out pretty well. I just think it's easier for everyone involved, plus it makes certain opportunities, which it does talk about in the book. More accessible. The Screaming Vortex is the area in this warp storm area where they have the horrible demon worlds. That's what's called the Screaming Vortex. They have a bit of a background, up, but they were clever enough to go, hey, we've got this background. But this is just what some people think. Because it's chaos, it's constantly changing, it's unknowable. It's a great area to have people running around in and fighting and doing different things. There's a sample adventure to back, which is pretty fun, although I would personally recommend, I think it's, if you have a bunch of people from disparate backgrounds and different things, the sample, the, the free sample adventure they have on the website, which they released to publicize, is fantastic because everyone starts off, you've been captured by the Inquisition. I won't go into more details that, it's a jailbreak. It explains why your guys are, and you actually forge a bond because you're up against the obstacles, which now, th that's one of the things. When you're playing this game and you make your characters, yes, people can go, but I'm playing Corn Berserker, which later on they bring us stuff for Corn Berserkers. He's like, well, I'm a, I'm a diehard follower of Corn. I wouldn't listen to him, he's a psycho. I wouldn't listen to him, he's a little, small, talky man, apostate. I don't need to listen to him. He's like, it's a group game. Yes, there are plenty of chaos champions like Karen Berserker who chop off people's head, but Karen Berserker doesn't work long term with other people. It's an RPG. You have to go into concession that you can't, although there are many of them, you can't play the characters who only work on themselves. Abaddon wouldn't work well in the group. He'd keep trying to kill everyone. So would you end up with everyone else killed or him killed? That's why you go with. Um, you have to make that concession and you've got to make, you have to respect when you're playing Chaos Space Marine and the other people are playing mortals, you have to respect and look at go, hey, that mortal over there, he's gotten up to a level where he can be my peer. That's not a small thing shouldn't be underestimated. I've seen people get that attitude. I've heard horror stories of games where people get that attitude and just like, I'm just gonna chop off his head because that's what my character do. You shouldn't necessarily have made a character like that. Although it does give advice for this in the games as a guide, which isn't something necessary in the main book. But um, it's a bit of a harsh way to deal with it. But if people really want to take that approach, pick up the Games Master's Guide. Quite good fun. Not everyone wants to play them because of the tentacles and all the other stuff. But, um, I've run a previous game of it, everyone had a blast, and I'm running a game at the moment, although some of the players are new to it, I started a higher power level because some of the stuff that was brought in supplements, you need to start a higher power level to allow them. Not all the players have enough fun because they, for every, some people for lower power games, if you want more lower power thing, start at the base start, and particularly if you start with mortals, although either way you can have great fun, put them into different settings, run riot, it's great fun. I really quite like it and the mechanics are tightened up just the last one the mechanics for example they tighten up things like before I mentioned I think in the dark heresy you just go full auto because it's you're more accurate with it but there's a choice there's something to be weighed up here in this when you're doing a single shot you get a plus 10 to hit semi is plus zero full auto is minus 10 
these are all half actions in this so you aim before it so you're getting a plus 20 to hit if you aim and do a single shot with a weapon but if you go set if you go full auto you get a plus zero because of minus 10 plus 10. so it's actually a choice now it's actually something you have to consider and i really like that mechanic to carry it over and only word it do they have changed i've noticed already but you know they've you can see them just slowly refining the system well once more depends on if your players and yourself really like chaos i do know of a game where the gm started it and he just he's like the players are the bad guys i just can't root for him it was hard for him to run the game because the players are the bad guys but i know i'm running them long so i'll stop there but if you like chaos if you like that sort of thing it's for you it's not for everyone some players don't like it and some gyms don't like rooting for the bad guys but hey it's all a matter of perspective in the grand scheme of things. Okay, I hope you've had fun. This has been the Inquisitorial Archives review of Black Crusade. I'll see you next time.